for a right-hand drive car, these are gonna be all the parts that are gonna be required to do the pedal install. So we have the OEM right-hand drive clutch pedal assembly. We have the OEM uh, right-hand drive brake pedal assembly. And just like the, uh, the left-hand drive car, the brake pedal is actually a lot smaller than the automatic car. And then you have uh, the master kit here with the billet adapter that I sell for the right-hand drive. This is specific to the right-hand drive cars and it comes with the, an integrated reservoir with this Willwood master. And it's very compact and it fits in the right-hand drive car a lot better. Uh, it comes with all the hardware to install it. You have a clevis with the pin um, for the that'll that'll go onto here when we go to install it. So that's going to actually connect the pedal to the master. Then you have a right hand drive specific clutch line kit, and then lastly you have the interior panel with the shift boot. So this is uh, this is again separate and different from the left hand drive. So the first step here is we're going to go into the car. I'm going to remove the brake pedal. And I'm going to leave that out for now. I'm going to uh, transfer all the parts from the, the left-hand drive or the right-hand drive brake pedal, automatic pedal, onto this uh, new manual pedal. And then we'll go ahead and start installing the clutch pedal itself. To make this process easier, since you're going to be laying on your back, what I recommend doing is pulling the seat out and uh, any electronics that are under here as well, pull them out. And then that way you can lay on your back here and get up into the pedal area a lot easier. Um, that, that's, that's the way I do it. You don't have to do it this way, but it does make it a lot easier on your back. All right, so you can see I'm laying here in the car on my back, looking up. And the first thing we're gonna do is remove this brake pedal right here. So you can see here, there's a spring. We're gonna remove it. This is really tough to do from under here. So this is um, this is the pin that goes to the brake pedal. So we're gonna remove it. And then you'll see up here, I'm gonna try to focus on this. So there's a bolt that goes through the, the pedal up here. We're gonna remove that. And then you have to be careful because there's actually washers that go on the inside of this bracket. So make sure you kind of pay attention to how those washers are stacked up. Because what they do is they keep the pedal from moving back and forth so much. If you don't put that one washer in the middle, it's gonna allow the pedal to kind of walk left and right, which you don't want. So I'm gonna go ahead, remove this um, pedal out now, and then we'll transfer all the uh, the little parts over from the from the automatic pedal, brake pedal, to the manual brake pedal. Okay, so you can see I got the bolt out of the brake pedal bracket up here, right? But you can, you see the brake pedal doesn't, just doesn't fall out of there. And that's because there's a, a, a sleeve bushing that slides through. So it actually slides out towards the tunnel of the transmission. So you put a flathead screwdriver in this end and push this sleeve out. You can see the end of the sleeve starting to come out. So once you get it started, you can usually get up there with your fingers and pull this out the rest of the way and then the pedal will drop out. So on the right here is the automatic pedal. You can see the large pad. I'm gonna move all the parts over from the automatic pedal, like these little plastic bushings here that are in there. I'm gonna move them over to the new pedal. And then there's a rubber stopper here that I'm gonna move over as well. Actually, this one comes with that. So you don't even have to worry about moving that over. But these are the these are the pieces of hardware that came out of the car. There's the sleeve that slides through here, uh, the pin for the spring, and then here's the bolt that slides through and uh, I kept the washer order intact so that I don't screw that up when I go to put it back together. But for now, this pedal is gonna stay out of the car because I wanna have all the room available to me to install the clutch pedal. So this, this uh, brake pedal will be installed as the last step. On the right-hand drive automatic cars, uh, you can see the location of where that master is gonna go, the clutch master is gonna go right in here. And what's nice about these um, JDM cars is the center hole here is already drilled. They just put a grommet over top of it. So basically, uh, we're only going to need to drill two holes in this setup. We're not going to need to use a hole saw like we would on the left-hand drive car. So that takes care of um, some of the work for us, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drill out the two holes for 
the master itself so the studs can pass through the firewall now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill these holes from the inside of the car. And you can see there, there's two little dimples or like on the back piece, uh, on the inside firewall piece, you can see those two circles that are kind of like templated out for you. You're basically just gonna drill through the center of those holes out through to towards the motor. So for these two holes, I'm gonna drill a pilot with a small bit first, and then I'm gonna come back and use a 3 8 bit to get my two outer holes for these two studs. All right, so here you can see my holes are drilled now. And you can see I did cut some of the insulation out around this pedal, and you're gonna to wanna to do that because you're gonna need some extra room there to get that pedal installed. And I might actually have to trim more than this out, but for now, this is good enough just so I could have drilled the holes and I could have more room to, to see what I was doing. But I might need to, to trim a little bit more around that edge just so that the pedal bracket itself will fit back in against the firewall. So now we're ready to install the actual clutch pedal. And the way that works is you're gonna slide the master cylinder assembled just like this through the firewall and you're gonna put the clevis bracket on there. And you can see here, this is the right hand drive clevis bracket. And that would be our one we make for the left hand drive. So the right hand drive one here is actually shorter. So basically this is gonna go through the firewall. Well, there's no firewall here, but I'm gonna show you how it works. Firewall through here and then the clevis slides onto the pedal. And what you can do is you can kind of adjust this to get you close so that you, you're pretty close to the lining up so it makes it a little easier when you're under the dash. And just, you're, it's gonna be a little off because there's gonna be firewall thickness in here, but you can kind of, kind of guess it out. But that's how it's gonna look um, installed. Um, but of course, you know, you're not gonna see this. There's gonna be separation with the firewall. So I'm gonna go ahead, put the clutch pedal up and in place slide the master cylinder with the adapter through and start bolting it up. Okay, so now you can see I have the clutch pedal uh, completely installed. I have the clevis attached to the pedal and I have the um, adjustment all the way out so that I have the maximum uh, throw with the master right now. And I got the two studs uh, bolted on through the firewall there that you can see. Uh, and then the one bolt that you can't see is back behind. All those are tightened down. And then the one that is up top, and that one was the, this one, uh, if I can get my finger in there to show you, that one up there was the trickiest one to get started. So the way I did it was I put that bolt in that I'm looking at right now first, just loosely, just to hold the pedal bracket in place. Then I slid the master through with the studs on, through the pedal assembly, and then I started those bolts. Uh, and then I, once I had everything started, then I went ahead and started tightening things down. Okay, so now I have the brake pedal back and installed. You can see I have the bolt back through it. I have the pin through it and I have the spring reattached. And then you just got to watch with that sleeve. You got to make sure that the sleeve goes through and then you got to, I use a flathead screwdriver to, to slide that washer up in between the bracket there first and then I slide the bolt through. So it's a little bit tricky. Uh, it might be a little bit frustrating, but you can get it. It's not too bad. So this is it for the pedal install now. Everything is in um, and we're ready to uh, bleed the clutch. So here's a little bit better view um, from looking at it kind of at a normal perspective rather than up on your back, looking up underneath. You can see the man pedal there and the manual brake pedal. Everything installed, looking good. This actually is an easier install um, on these right-hand drive cars than it is on the left-hand drive. The clutch pedal was way easier, a lot more room to work there versus um, on the on the left-hand drive, you have all the, the fuse box and all that in that place. So this makes it um, a little bit easier to get in there and install it. So now that all the pedals are installed, you can go ahead and put your interior back together and we should be ready to install the clutch line, bleed the clutch, and we should be ready to do a fire up after we do a couple little wiring items. All right, so here you can see the right-hand drive master cylinder installed. You can see I have my motive power bleeder still hooked up, but I just wanted to show you how the lines are ran here. So there's a fitting that I give you with this right-hand drive kit, which is a banjo um, to 3AN adapter. And then you have your 3AN adapt uh, line with a 90 that goes back towards the firewall and then runs over the bell housing. So let me see if I can get a light down there. So you can see the the line running down there and over top the bell housing kind of. Um, 
so this is pretty this is good because it'll give you as much clearance as possible for the exhaust and you can you can route this line up here along the brake lines as well if you want so you can pull it up I know it's hard to see but you can pull that line up there up up alongside the brake lines and zip tied in place uh, if you want because your downpipe is going to be coming down through here on most cars this is still an NA car so it doesn't have the downpipe but that's how the right hand drive master works one thing that I found on the right hand drive car is my power for the wiring I had to use the yellow wire um, that was on that eight pin connector not the big connector that was uh that was the other harness but the yellow wire not the black and red the yellow one is the one that worked on this automatic right hand drive car and then you can see here also this is an option you can do this um i only do this on the on the people that i don't worry about cutting up their harness but you can see here i basically terminated all the connectors the the stock automatic connectors and i'm going to make this really nice and and um tie this all together here and then put some loom over it and then that'll be a super nice uh, harness for the transmission there'll be no connectors hanging out there it'll be all tidy on this car this was an na right hand drive one thing to keep in mind um, is that they only come with one bushing from the factory one rubber bushing so on this car we did uh, the phr solid bushings on the back and then we also did the phr solid bushings on the front so that'll make this diff um a lot more secure then as far as the clutch line goes on the right hand drive um, which is a little different from the left your lines come out and of course go up over the bell housing behind the motor and over towards the right hand side so i'm going to show you how that line looks on the top as well